Hello, everyone. This is Tom Fox. I'm back for another episode, and I'm absolutely thrilled today to have with me Cindy Payton. Cindy, first of all, welcome, and thank you so much for taking the time to visit with us today. Thank you. I'm honored to be here. Cindy, could you tell us uh, where you grew up? I grew up in central Jersey, New Jersey, so I'm a Jersey girl, and it was just the same old routine, great childhood, and I liked New Jersey, but when I was in high school, my sister moved to Texas. I visited, and I love the idea of warmer weather. So I knew when I graduated, I was going to say goodbye to New Jersey and I was going to look for a new adventure. So when did you decide or when did you really become aware of art and your passion around art? Looking back, I didn't realize it at the time, but looking back, I would say high school. I took every elective. Fortunately, we had a rate, a really great arts program which I think is a problem now in schools. But back then I took pottery. I took drawing, painting, sketching. I don't think I realized how much I loved it until later in life, I would say. So did you uh, study art at all after high school? I did not. I did not. I went to college. I went to Texas, started a new chapter. And my sister and my brother-in-law were kind enough to give me a job in the summer and put me up in the summer and support me that way. And so I would, I worked my way through school that way, flipping pizzas and serving food. And so I went to A&M and I got a degree in a, a bachelor's in science in medical technology, which now I believe they call clinical laboratory scientist. When you have lab, labs drawn at a doctor's office, it goes to the lab and we were the folks in the lab. So did your sister and brother-in-law live in Bryan College Station? No, they lived in Houston. They lived near NASA. Okay. And if you've anybody's ever been to Houston and been to Mario's Flying Pizza, that's where I made a lot of money for the summer and put myself through school. So what did you do after college? I met my husband in college. We both went to A&M and I was very fortunate to get a job right out of college. So I worked, I got hired on in the microbiology department at the Methodist Hospital and we lived there in Clear Lake. So I lived, I probably spent almost 20 years in Clear Lake. And my husband worked in Houston. I did as well. And that's, I just was doing that kind of thing and never really thought about art until later again. I stayed busy. I stayed creative. I like to cook. I like to sew. So a lot of tactical things. Spent a lot of time there. When did you uh, get out to the Hill Country? Two and a half years ago. What brought you out here? What's interesting is we left Texas. We were gone about 20 years. We went to Michigan for my husband's job, spent 13 winters in Grand Rapids. Lovely place to raise your family, but after 13 winters, it was time. And so then we moved to Colorado, spent nine years in Colorado. And then when COVID hit, we decided it was time to move back. The family was here, all of our families in Houston and some in Austin. And my husband was a few years for retire- from retirement, and we said, what are we waiting for? I think a lot of people did that, too. So we wanted the Hill Country because it was so beautiful. And we came down for two trips. We drove everywhere from Austin to Blanco to Johnson City, Bernie, Kerrville, Fredericksburg. We just drove around and found we felt very good in Kerrville. We just loved the feel of it. I like the small town. We like the people. And then when we got here, of course, I had, at the time, I had gotten back into art probably since 2017. So when I found out that they had a cultural center and a booming arts kind of community, I was sold. So what got you back into art in 2017? You know, when my youngest son, I have two boys, they're now 24 and 29. And when my youngest was in high school, I started to know that I was going to have some time on my hands. I had left my job because I was home and my husband traveled a lot. So I said, I got to find something to keep myself interested and or keep myself interested in. And I had made homemade cards and different kinds of drawing and different kinds of what I would say were more crafty items. But I just felt the need to really find something unique. And the funny thing is it was pivotal. I was hanging out at the art supply store and it was actually a frame shop as well. Aaron Brothers had one in Colorado. And I was in there so often then the manager finally said, you're in here a lot, would you like a job? And I was like, no. (laughs) But she said, we have part-time jobs. It's a few hours a week. It's seasonal, you'll love it. 
And I took it. And I would say over the two years that I worked there, I was re-inspired. I saw all kinds of art come through to get framed. I saw clients and customers come in that were working at home. They were doing simple watercolors. They were just on their own and they wanted to frame their pieces. And I loved helping them find the right thing. And I thought if they can do it, I can do it. And so I, in talking to them at the register, I found out that there was places I could take classes. And that's, I think that was the pivotal part. When I found out they had classes nearby, I enrolled for oil painting and I took it once a week, three hours a week. And, and that was the, that was the big launch. That was when the dining room became a studio and the rest is history, I think. So tell us about your experiences here in the Kerrville Art Community. My first experience is when I met, it's funny, I met Elaine Capers probably within the month that I had arrived. I, my husband and I went to PAX to have a cup of coffee, and then we walked over to the Kerrville Arts Center, the Kerrville Arts and Community sure. Cultural Center. And she was there, and she, I don't know, she was hanging something or talking about hanging a new show, and she spoke to me, and she invited me to paint with them on their Monday Painters Group. And there's a couple of them I still paint with them. I, I don't go as often as I can. We're renovating a house, so things get a little nutty. But yeah, so she was super welcoming. And I, I think back to that moment. It was really sweet. And so I met a lot of people through that. Uh, I'm part of the Kerrville Arts Club, the KAC. Uh, and just talking shop with people is refreshing. We can talk about pigments and brushes and canvas for 45 minutes. So. Let's turn to your art. What do you, do you have a specialty? Do you like to draw one thing or another? Or tell us about that. The funny thing is I don't, I'm not a very good drawer. I can paint, but I can't draw very well. And I am working on that. So I have a sketchbook now. That's my new thing. But I would say I started in pet portraits, to be honest. I painted a portrait of my little 16-year-old Jack Russell after he passed away. And it was fairly good. And then I painted some others, and then I painted my labs. And somehow someone asked me to paint theirs. And so I've evolved. I, I do a lot of pet portraits. I paint local cows. So I like that sort of close-up expression. I, I like to paint on like a 10 by 10, which is just the face of the cow. I do some landscapes as well. I've painted some florals. But the teacher I worked with and the teacher I learned from, we did wet in wet oil painting. So it's this sort of smushy push-pull of paint back and forth. And it's not layers and layers like the old-fashioned sort of traditional oil paint is. And I really like that. So I like to try and get some character and some energy in my work as best I can. And that's, I just want to learn more. And I find that right now is a great time because we can go to the internet and dive in pretty deep with small subjects and landscapes. Let me think. I just did, I just painted for, I just have, I have 12 paintings that's going to this new show. I did some birds. Let me think about that. And cows, farms, kind of Americana and nature and pets. That's my theme. But I think I've explained my style is emerging, I think. I think that when, now that I look at the paintings I've just created, I see a similarity in the style of the work, not necessarily the subject. I don't paint one kind of subject. I, I get bored and I need to paint something else. So you hinted at my next question, which is your upcoming show. Tell us about that. Tell us where it is, when it is, and why you're doing this show. It is, let's see, it begins on February 8th. It is at the Kerr County Arts and Cultural Center, the gallery downtown. Sure. And it runs through March 2nd. So about nine months ago, a friend of mine in the Monday Painters group, Dawn Wire, she was in the Magnificent Seven, she said to me, actually, I think it was Elaine said that there was a, there was a block of time that was available in February. And she said, and she had talked to Dawn about it. And she said, it's up for grabs. Anybody can take it. It's in the front gallery. It's in the Derby Gallery. And so Dawn said, hey, do you want to do a show? And I said, sure. When is it? Like she was like, it's in February. And I was like, sure, let's do it. And so I didn't really think about it. I just said yes, because I just felt like that was the right answer. I just didn't overthink it. 
And I knew somehow I would get them done. And I feel like I'm just at a point where I have nothing to lose. I just want to share my art. And if people like it and they connect with it, great. And if they don't, I have something to learn. So so what do you have uh, planned for the show? If you can tease us with that. So I have everything from five by five paintings of a chickadee and a tufted titmouse, which I see out my windows every morning, which are tiny. I like to paint small. I like, and then I've gotten bigger. And then my largest piece is 24 by 36, which is very big for me. I worked on that quite a while. And it's called Ask a Local. And it's basically a scene. It's a nighttime scene from like a local brewery. And what I like about it that I've come to know is as people have seen it, whether it's friends or my kids or people that have visited, everyone seems to connect with this piece a little differently. So someone may see, my son said he felt like it was on the coast of the Carolinas. Someone else felt like it was in a small town in Tennessee. So I like the fact that the piece speaks to somebody differently, which is why I called it Ask a Local, because to me, you can make up whatever story you want about it. So that's my biggest piece. And my second largest piece is 24 by 24. And it's a mama cow with a baby in front. And it was a photograph I took out on Tierlanda Ranch where we live. So the local cows, I'm always stopping and taking pictures. And that's where I came up with that one. So, so all in, in all, everything in between. <laughs> so do you draw or paint with the Tierlanda folks? There is a watercolor group out there that paint every Wednesday, and I'm involved with that one as well. Again, I, I don't get out there every week, but great group of people. And so I dabble in watercolors. I do like watercolors. I paint them more for fun. I've started a sketchbook recently, and I'm, I'm just trying to learn new things. And because I always felt like my drawing was my weaker point, I decided to put a lot of time in sketching. So I try and sketch daily. And I don't use a pencil, I use a pen because I found that the pencil allowed me to erase and the pen kept me looser so that I would have to be loose enough to make small marks than hard, crisp edges. And, and to be honest, it's really worked a lot. And now I use, the, I use the watercolors to enhance those drawings and those pen sketches. So that's a lot of fun. So I do paint with them out there at Tiralinda too. It's a great group of people out there. Very very busy community. A lot right. of retired folks, but they're into all kinds of stuff. Right. If you want to know about gardening or dark skies or painting or there's somebody out there. So after the show here at the uh, Kerrville Cultural and Arts Center, you have anything else uh, in 2024 you've got planned? I will be part of the Monday Painters Group exhibit in May. I think it starts May 8th also at the Cultural Center. And one of the cool things we're doing for that, which I find very unique, is the founder's tree, which was cut down several months ago, affected the community and a lot of the people and, of course, a lot of the artists that are local. And we got to talking about it one day at the painting, and someone had a reference. And um, one of the local gals, um, Mary Zirkel, who, if you know anything about art in Kerrville, you know Mary. And she went ahead and painted the tree and she put it in a recent show, I, maybe back in October. And so we got to talking about this tree and what it meant to people and how people love to paint trees. And the, we got the reference photos and sent them to all the people and said, if you want to take this challenge, we're all going to paint the same reference. And the idea behind it was to paint the same reference, but to sh demonstrate to people or the viewer or people new to art or not new to art that. We can all paint the same thing and it's going to look entirely different. And we thought that'd be a nice talking point for the show. So, in fact, I just finished painting mine this week. So that was now that I'm done with this show, I thought, let me paint that. And that was a lot of fun. And that's in May. So that's May 8th. And that's I don't know which gallery that's in, but that's with the Monday Painters. And we had the Kerrville Times. Gentlemen came out from Kerrville Times. They have a magazine that it's an insert that goes in once a month. Right. So Dawn. Our next, our Hill Country Horizons show, that's the, what, the one that's going to be in February, that'll be featured in that art magazine. So cool. he came out and took some pictures and interviewed us. So it's fun to get the information out there. 
In fact, Dawn and I did a similar thing. We both, we had gone to a local ranch together and taken just a bunch of pictures because we knew our art needed to be, we wanted our Hill Country Horizons show to be focused on that kind of subject matter. And so what we did was we went out and we came back and we were sitting over coffee and we're going through all the pictures she had taken and I had taken. And I would say maybe out of 20 photos, they were all different except for one. So she and I had literally taken the exact same photo from the same vantage point. And we were traveling together. We were walking the property. So what she took pictures of no, weren't necessarily what I saw as subject matter, which I thought was interesting. And then, but the one thing, so because we focused on that one photograph, we decided to do the same thing. Let's paint this photo reference in our own style, take artistic licensure, do with it what you want. And we're going to hang those in our show as well. Because art's not always a competition. It should be shared and it's not, it's, you are who you are and your voice will come out eventually. If our listeners wanted to actually see any of your art, short of going to the shows, is there any place online they could go to get a taste of the work you do? Yes. I have an Instagram and I wish I could rename it because it trips people up, but it is CP Palette. And that stands for Creative Palette by Cindy Payton. That's what I came up with when I first started painting and I just haven't changed it. So CP Palette. And I believe it's on Facebook as well, Creative Palette by Cindy Payton. You can find it. And the two are linked. So anything I usually post on Instagram will show on Facebook. Well, Cindy, we're going to link to your Instagram account. If I can find your Facebook account, I'm going to put that in there. We're certainly going to put in information on your upcoming show. I wanted to thank you again for taking the time to visit with me. And I hope we can continue this conversation. Thank you for having me. And I appreciate the opportunity to share my art with the world. Thank you.